Now that we discussed surveillance, next thing we want to do is our hacking methodology. That's our first step, is our surveillance looking for publicly known information, internet information, stuff like that. Now what we want to do is we want to actually carry out the next step. So we can even use Kali Linux a little bit, information gathering, right? Well, what do we want? DNS, IDS, live host identification. That's where we're at now. We're doing what we call scanning. So we're going to do scanning and those types of things. So we're going to do it in Inmap. So we have a range here, live systems, SP192.168.177.0 slash 24. So we're going to go to the entire subnet 177 and give us the targets. So we got some targets. We got 1, 2, 128 to backtrack machine. We're not going to attack that. 132 and 254. So now the next step is ports. And we just change this to 1, comma, 2, comma, 132, comma, 254. Now let's take a little bit longer because we're running now a scan looking for ports. Now there's 65,536 ports, 0 through 65,535. What Nmap's going to do is only scan 1,000 of them of the well-named ports. All right, and there's you go. When we look here, we have some information of interest. So if we scroll up, we can see there's some ports opening on the machine. Now services, we already talked about in a demo. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to what we call the everything scan, so the dash A. Now, since it is the dash A, it will take more time. So we're going to use the time capability of Nmap and speed it up and say go faster than normal. So it doesn't sit there and wait forever when it does its scanning. So what's important to note from a standpoint of our red teaming is we're looking for ports, services, and then what's running on those services. Now with Nmap, what they have with the dash uppercase, uppercase A option is they will run scripting engines and all kinds of cool additional benefits for us. So as it's running here, it's now doing more. Remember, to get a live update, I just hit the space bar. And the space bar will come back and tell me where it's at and the percentage of being done and those types of things. So what Nmap does again is it connects, and if you may recall, it connects with a send packet, a synchronized, and looks for a synchronized act. So in send act coming back is how it knows if the port's open or not. If it's a reset, then the port's closed. And that's kind of what it's doing here as it does its scan. And we just wait. Pin testing is a lot of waiting. Waiting for the targets to give us the information we need to footprint enumerate, do all the steps we talked about. In the dash uppercase A, we use kind of to do our enumeration. Now that the scan is completed, we see that all ports are filtered on this box. That's not going to probably be a good target. If nothing's open, we can't attack it. Now we got some stuff here, though, as we go through and we look. We've got domain, tells us it's VMware. Doesn't know what actual OS it is because it's too much, right? So these are different types of things that you have to deal with when you do your scanning. So now here though, because Nmap now has this really cool feature called scripting engines, it tells us SMB OS discovery. It knows it's a Windows Server 2003 box, Service Pack 2, which is correct. It knows that the name is 2003 target. Probably should come up with a better name than that, huh? That bias computer name work group. So it's not part of a domain, it's only a work group. And the account setting is user level authentication and SMB v2 is not supported. So it doesn't have SMB v2 support. So we found all that information out just from following our hacking methodology in our process. Now, what's the next step? Well, what we would do from here is we would start looking for vulnerabilities. We can use a vulnerability scanner for that, which you know we've discussed the vulnerability scanners and things like that. Or we could just do our searches that we've already covered and discussed how to do actual vulnerability searches and find a vulnerability. Plus, we can use the tool itself. So if I do from here, MSF console, start Metasploit. Now when Metasploit comes up, we'll use the feature within Metasploit called search. The search feature in Metasploit can look for things. So we know we got a SMB server message block that's running on Windows all the time, so we can take a quick look at some of the vulnerabilities for server message block. So all we do is we do a search SMB. And there we are. We have all these different vulnerabilities under the server message block. 
So what we'd do is we would start looking at their rating. The higher the ratings, good. Great rating is what you're looking for. You're looking for things that will give you shell code access at a privileged level. So as we look through here, we see a lot of them. There have been a lot of SMB vulnerabilities in Windows, right? So this is a Snort vulnerability, Novell, Apple Safari, Sun Java, you name it, we've got it. There's a vulnerability in there. So what we would do is we would go and look at some of these in an attempt to link this exploit to these vulnerabilities. These vulnerabilities listed here have an exploit already located in the Metasploit toolkit, which is why that makes it a, mo a very powerful toolkit that we can use in our hacking methodology. And this is the process. Once we go through these scans, we do all our scanning, we do our information gathering, we identify the OS, the operating system, we look at what the actual environment's running, we lab it up, we put it in a lab, we start practicing to see what works. Once we know what works, we continue on and attempt exploitation. As a red team, we usually have exploitation as part of our scope of work, and we just start running through this until we find an exploit that works. And this concludes the lab on the hacking methodology.